because I've received a lot of feedback from individuals saying the video is very helpful. However, they still pay to have someone else do the install. And you know what, quite frankly, that is fine. Uh, if you do not feel comfortable, absolutely have a certified, trained, professional mechanic do that. However, if you are not doing the installation yourself because you don't have the tools, that really makes me scratch my head because modifications are not cheap. We're looking at, you know, anywhere between five to over a thousand dollars for an exhaust. You have air intakes that are anywhere between, you know, two to three hundred dollars plus. So for someone to make a comment that they don't have the tools, I wonder if it's a matter of them just not knowing what tools they need and how much they cost. So that's exactly what this video is about. I am going to go over the tools that I use that I believe are basic tools needed to begin modifying your car yourself. The tools will pay for themselves quite quickly after the first install you do your, yourself. So for example, I recently installed lowering springs on one of our project cars. I also just installed coilovers on our other project car. If I had paid a mechanic to install those, they would have cost anywhere between $350 to $450. I will go through the basic tools so you can start off small. And then at the end of the video, I'll even give you some hints of how to save in building your tools out. So if you're interested in hearing more, then stay tuned. So let me just put some parameters around what I'm going to discuss here. And these are basic tools needed to perform modifications to your car, such as coilovers or springs, um, changing your tires, an oil change, doing a strut tower bar, uh, sway bars, uh, doing an, an exhaust, whether it's the axle back or a full cat back or header, header back exhaust, things of that nature. What I'll be showing you online here, I will be taking from primarily two sites. I will be taking from Amazon and I will also be taking from Harbor Freight. The reason for that is a couple reasons. Quite frankly, it's easy. Amazon has everything. Like probably many of you, I buy a ton of stuff through Amazon. They usually have very good prices. And of course, I will leave links in the description below to where you can buy these tools. You can buy them wherever you want, but know that if you do click on the link and purchase through Amazon, you are helping the channel. I will get a very small uh, commission on your purchase. And Let's start by talking about floor jacks. For most anything you're going to do in modifying your car, you'll need a good floor jack. Make sure that it's rated for the right weight. Take into consideration how high the maximum height the floor jack can go, as well as how low the floor jack can be or the, the profile. What I personally have is a low profile long reach. But I have a low profile because we are lowering our cars and I don't want it to and I don't want to run into a situation where I can't get the jack under the car. So I have a low profile. I also have a long reach so that those jack points underneath the car, some of which are a little difficult to get to, I can make sure that the reach is long enough uh, to get to that. And then also I want to make sure that the jack has sufficient height. And a couple videos ago that I put out for the Honda Accord installing the rear sway bar, one thing that I noticed was it was very difficult to jack up the rear of the car to get it high enough to put the jack stands underneath it. So I needed a jack that actually, I had two, I needed one that actually got it up to a certain height where one of my jacks was not rated at that height that I needed. So moving on from the floor jack, Let's talk about jack stands. So whether you get two or you get a set of four, I would recommend a set of four um, because I, I, I think it's worthwhile to get the entire car up, balanced, leveled, and all the weight sitting on the four 
floor jacks. If money is tight, then at least get two. You can prop up either the front or the rear or the sides, whatever it might be. Similar to the floor jack, the jack stands are rated for weight, so make sure you get the right tonnage. I recommend a good set of wheel chocks. So these are either made out of uh, flexible plastic or hard rubber, as I'm showing here on the Amazon website. You know, they could range anywhere from, you know, nine, ten dollars uh, up to a set for, you know, twenty dollars. They're rather inexpensive. I have a set kind of like this one here. Another option which I find where it makes sense to use this, these are much easier to use than going through the effort of jacking the car up and putting them on jack stands, is a good set of automotive ramps. Amazon has several to choose from. Harbor Freight has this set here, this Pittsburgh for $45. And I'm almost positive, I think these are what I have. Just make sure the width of the ramp is the right width for your tire. And also the height, the maximum height is high enough you're looking for. So you'll find some of these ramps that are thinner, some that are wider. You'll also find that the height, the maximum height that you drive your car up varies. So keep that into consideration. They are rated based on weight. So keep that in mind. So let's get into the good stuff now. First tools that I will highlight as a necessity is a good ratchet and socket set. They come in different sizes. You either have a quarter, a three eighths, or a half inch. And the size you wanna get is up to you. For me, I do find that I use the three eighth inch ratchet more often than I use the half inch. Some ratchets come with extensions, meaning it will be whatever length, eight, 10 inches, 12 inches long, but the handle itself will extend out to give you a longer reach. Another option on ratchets are, are ones that have a flexible head. If you're able to spend a little bit more to get that flex head on the ratchet, it gives you more options when it comes to trying to get at a nut, at a bolt, uh, in a tough spot. Instead of having to have your handle parallel, it gives you the flexibility like it's called a flex head to move it around. Now, some of these flex heads you're, you can lock into position, which are great. You know, try to look for that. What goes on the end of a ratchet is sockets. Let's talk a little bit about the sockets that are available out there. You can buy a ratchet by itself and then buy sockets either individually or in sets. I recommend buying, buying them in sets. Consider whether you're going to go with SAE or metric. Everything that we've been doing of late with our two project cars, with the Mazda Miata and with the Honda Accord, those nuts and bolts come in metric. There are shallow sockets, so a shorter socket, as well as a deep socket, which just means that the socket is taller. There's some cir circumstances where you'll need a shallow one just because you don't have that much room to get a deeper socket in that place. And then other times, well, you'll need a deep socket. Options to your basic ratchet socket set would be socket extensions. You're adding length so that you can get to hard to reach places. And these extensions come in various sizes. It is a nice to have. Uh, there have been a couple situations though, like with the rear sway bar install on the Honda Accord, where I did need an extension. There's also the universal joint sockets. There are some situations where not only in addition to having a long reach, you need to go around a corner, a bend. Fancy that, right? The universal joint socket you can add to the end and it allows it to bend or to go around a corner. And as you ratchet, it spins the entire thing. So it's neat, it's very, very handy. Now moving on to wrenches. I personally don't use wrenches all that often. Usually I find myself using a traditional wrench where no matter how low a profile the socket is or the socket plus ratchet, I still can't get it in place to grab that nut or that bolt. 
and that's where a nice wrench comes in handy. What's neat nowadays is a lot of the wrench sets come as ratcheting, so they act like a socket, which is great. Um, really, really helpful. You can wrench away instead of, you know, turning, removing, and, you know, replacing your wrench on the nut or a bowl and constantly going through that level of effort. You will be using screwdrivers, whether it's flathead or Phillips head. Set of pliers, maybe different size pliers, including needle nose pliers would be very helpful. Lastly, when it comes to your basic core set of tools is the torque wrench. Yes, it is absolutely necessary if you are going to do things correctly and safely when it comes to modifying your cars there are a lot of your nuts and bolts on your car that need to and absolutely should be torqued down to the manufacturer's spec they come in different sizes like the ratchet meaning there's half inch three eighths inch and i use the half inch a lot with torquing my lug nut uh, on my tires on my wheels some are mechanical, some are digital. I like the mechanical. You just set it with a twist and you lock it into place. They are also rated at different foot pounds or a different range of torque setting ratings. That includes some tools that you could probably get away with not buying. However, I use them. I use them quite frequently and it really, lowers my frustration level when I run into situations where I need to use them. I am glad that I have them. So the first one on that list is a good breaker bar. When you run into a situation where you can't get that nut or bolt off, no matter how hard you tug, you pull, a breaker bar comes in handy. You know, it gives you that additional leverage. Get one good breaker bar and it will pay for itself when you find the time that you absolutely need it. Second, along the same lines as a breaker bar is penetrating oil. When you can't use a breaker bar or you're in a situation where you really can't get to it or in a combination with a breaker bar, that nut or bolt still won't come off. Penetrating oil really comes in handy. There's CRC, there's sea foam, there's all sorts of penetrating fluid out there. I generally use PB Blaster. Now, are they all the same? Maybe, maybe not. Is it better than nothing? Yes, I do think it's better than nothing. Only thing is, is PB Blaster stinks. But I do find that when I use it, it's a situation where I do spray some on the nut or bolt, and then I walk away for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, kind of let it soak in a little. And an essential, I think, is good lighting. Now, if you have a nice garage, a nice situation where you have where it's well lit, great, congratulations, most of us don't. If you're under the car, it's dark under there. And having a couple of automotive work lights will really help out. I have probably four or five different smaller lights, whether it's a handheld, whether it's one with a magnet that you can you know, attach to something metal, flexible heads. Just look at the lumens. Lumens is really going to be you know, what you need to look at to determine or compare how bright it can get. Um, if you're considering changing your oil yourself, there's a couple tools that I would highly recommend that you have for it. The first is a good oil filter wrench. The thing with that is this is probably not a tool that you'll get one, you'll use it forever and it'll be done. And the reason for that is your oil filter depending on your vehicle, will be in different positions on the engine. And that means a good oil wrench to remove that oil filter for one car may not work well for another car. Just making sure you understand where your oil filter is positioned before you start looking at what type of wrenches to buy. And then of course, with the wrenches, make sure you get the right size. Oil drain pan. Now there's a bunch out there. I will tell you, I'm really happy with mine because it doubles or triples in usage, meaning I can put it under the car's oil pan, oil drain plug, it flows into it. When it's done, I cap it, I clean it, and then I use it to store it. And the profile can stand up, I can put it off to the side. When it gets full, 
I simply put it in the car. I can bring it down to my local uh, automotive mechanic and drop it off with them. And these are optional. A set of gloves, whether it is um, a full automotive set, whether it is rubber or latex gloves. Now me personally, I do have them. I have a set of disposable and I have a set of automotive gloves. And honestly, I'll find that sometimes I use them and sometimes I don't. The gloves not only help protect you from mechanical scrapes, but also from burns. If you're working um, with the exhaust or closer to the engine and it's still hot, it helps with uh, the oils and the fluids, not getting the oils and fluids on your hands. So next is a magnetic extension. You will inevitably drop a screw, a nut, a bolt, something in the engine bay, and you will curse the fact that you did that. When you finally find it, it will probably be caught in some crevice that without help, you'll never be able to reach yourself. Now there are extensions with magnets at the end that can pick those screws, nuts, and bolts up. Lastly is a trim removal kit. I do have one. I have a full kit. I will tell you though, out of all of the pieces within the kit, there's probably two that I just consistently use. These are nice because they are made to pop out those plastic rivets uh, to remove your trim. If you're doing a lot of body work or removing panels, you really might wanna consider. Now on the expensive side, there's a couple things that you may want to opt to purchase or maybe put it on your list for a future purchase. The first one on the list is an impact gun. Whether it's a corded or battery operated, a impact gun can really be helpful, uh, especially I find I use it mainly when I am removing the lug nuts on my car. A larger one is helpful, but it has limited use because you don't have a lot of maneuverability because they're so large to get into tight spaces. However, there are smaller ones that are battery operated uh, that you can use. And I don't have one, but I will tell you that that is something that I am seriously considering to be able to zip those nuts or bolts off and zip them back on. The last one, which is odd that it's last, but a good toolbox. Toolboxes though can be really expensive. I put it at the end, it's not essential. You can get a box. You can put your tools in anything. Originally, I had just a very small, modest toolbox and as things grew, I got larger. As your collection does grow, you will probably want to invest in one and you'll have to be thoughtful whether you want a, a carryable one, which by the way, they're not, even though it looks like it has a handle on it and you can carry it, you fill up those tools and you're talking 50 pounds of weight you know, within that toolbox. Or if you want one on wheels that you can wheel around um, and if you have the space, that's great. I think those are really helpful, but they are not cheap. With that said, I promised you my recommendation on how to get some of these tools on the cheap. My recommendation is to buy some of these used. You can go out on all sorts of websites, whether it's your local town swap or you know, sale page on Facebook, whether it's a Craigslist or whether it's a let go or whatever the current app is, they don't, for the most part, your basic tools, the ratchets, the wrenches, the sockets, etc., the breaker bars, the torque wrenches, they will last. They will last, for the most part, a lifetime. I would not feel uncomfortable purchasing any of these tools used, especially some of them that maybe you don't use as frequently. I would highly recommend that if you're starting off and you are cost conscious, but you still want to get into the tools, go get some used ones. At some point, once they mix in with your new ones, you're never even gonna remember which ones were used and which ones weren't. I hope you found this helpful. I hope this gives you a better understanding of what tools you may need, what tools you can start off with and then you can build into. Let me know what your favorite tools are, what you recommend. Let me know if I missed a tool. Thank you for watching and until next time.